Well, hello, UCR. Uh, welcome to our Operational Continuity Workgroup Campus Briefing. Uh, you may know that the Operational Continuity Workgroup is one of five on campus that are working that are working hard to make sure that we um, uh, update the campus and make sure the return to um, uh, the campus is as safe as possible. Um, what we have here today is some information to share with you. And I think the important thing, or one of the important things to highlight is that it is it's time sensitive. So this information is as much as we uh, know and can and at this point in time. And so things could change. We will commit to updating the um, campus as things change, as we get newer information from our uh, public health officials, from the state and other guidance as well. Um, as we look to here at the presenters, you saw on that slide, the uh, members that'll be going and going over this material for you. I would highlight that unfortunately, Tammy Few, our ABC for Human Resources is under the weather, but we'll uh, do our best to pinch hit for her today. Uh, this is our agenda, basically, that we'll go over today, and we'll have um, uh, more focus on each of these individual areas, the membership of this operational continuity work group and our charge and scope, uh, talking about workplace safety plans, uh, essentially there, and then looking at employee and supervisor expectations and support that we can provide for the campus uh, and then we'll spend a little time talking about the draft UCOP uh, vaccine mandate and what that draft uh, means uh, for all of us at this point in time. Uh, the Operational Continuity Workgroup members are listed here. Tammy Few and Sheila Ediati are the co-chairs of this group. Jason Espinoza and Cheryl Murdoch uh, give great support. Um, I'm Rand Gorey, uh, provides communication support. You can see the other members. Certainly highlight to all of you that if you would um, need to contact any of us, uh, contact anybody that's on this list, feel free to do that with questions, information you may have. And I would also mention that this uh, PowerPoint will be on our return to campus uh, website uh, following this presentation. The Operational Continuity Committee, our charge, basically you can read it here, but it's really to find the best ways to make sure that uh, return to campus is as safe as possible for our faculty, staff, and students, and to uh, work with any and all support activities, including UR, HR policies and procedures uh, to help assure that. Uh, one of the things that we should highlight here is the fact that our campus, our students, our faculty, and our staff did such a great job um, basically going remote in March of 2020 and still being able to address key needs for the campus uh, and uh, really for many people staying remote up until this time even. But there were a number of faculty and staff that never left the campus. Uh, these individuals are providing essential functions for the campus. Uh, they are uh, faculty that are maybe working in research labs or other areas. Uh, there are a host of other individuals that, um, although impacted by COVID, uh, have essentially come into campus um, each and every day. So our thanks for the great work that the whole campus did in addressing and responding to this uh, emergency. And now hopefully we can plan safely for a return to campus. So I'm going to turn it over to Sheila Hediati and she'll go over a number of the next slides. Thanks, Jerry. And, and thank you for recognizing that many in our UCR community have been working on campus. Um, and many are familiar with the procedures that were put into place early on and that continue to be in place now. But for those of you who may be uh, preparing for your return, we did want to in demonstrate to you what procedures have been put into place and how we're protecting all those on campus. So first and foremost, we have a campus-wide COVID prevention plan that complies with all the state guidelines and satisfies the regulatory drivers for COVID-19 prevention. In addition to the campus-wide procedures, each supervisor has been and will continue to be required to submit a worksite-specific plan. 
And that plan assesses what risk mitigation factors must be in place in their work environment to protect their staff. And one element of the COVID prevention plan is the uh, COVID-19 pre uh, uh, prevention training and awareness component. And this course uh, can be found on the UC Learning Management Center, and it has been assigned to all employees on campus. And it is mandated that all the employees who access the campus facilities complete this course before arriving on campus. And another part of our COVID prevention plan is that all employees and students are required to submit a daily wellness survey through the UCR health system. And by completing the survey, uh, employees demonstrate that they have either been cleared to come to campus or not cleared. And the supervisor will receive a notification of the clearance at the time of submission. The campus is also tracking all positive communications, I'm sorry, all positive cases and communicating to those others in the work area that may have been impacted. And if they have been exposed, they are notified and provided guidance on how to and where to get tested. And so you can also see on our COVID case dashboard, uh, which is updated every 24 hours, uh, where the cases are taking place on campus. And if you go into your uh, into the dashboard today, you'll see that our case numbers are dramatically dropping. We only have had three cases that have been reported in the last three weeks. So we are on the downward trajectory. We also provide asymptomatic testing for many units on campus, as well as for students who are on campus. Thank you, Sheila. Um, so for custodial work, that's one of the questions that people have had about how they're being protected. So for over a year, facility services, about 15 months, uh, began using CDC approved and UCR EHS approved uh, disinfecting cleaning. Uh, we've escalated our cleaning for all common areas uh, in active buildings. And that has been going on since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, we will be partnering and continue to partner with EHS as guidelines change, but we'll adhere to all guidelines for cleaning as the campus um, begins to open up and uh, more individuals return to campus. Uh, in addition, for uh, the last year, we've also made available additional uh, cleaning and disinfecting support across campus. Uh, as was mentioned, many people have remained on campus due to their essential functionality. Um, we have disinfecting kits, which include a disinfecting spray, towels, and um, tape for spacing off for physical distancing in your local areas. Uh, to date, we've distributed over 500 disinfecting kits, and those remain available. Um, uh, hand sanitizers as well uh, are made available. This is at no cost to the campus community at this time. We've distributed over 2,400 hand sanitizers. Uh, both of these are all, these sets of items are at no charge and are available and we anticipate having fully available. But we do recommend as you look at your worksite specific plan, as you look to organize within your own departments, um, the daily uh, use of desks, meeting areas, et cetera, please access these kits and supplies. You can go on the um, link below as detailed, but simply just go to facilities at ucr.edu. And at the top, we have a fall return tab and it provides all of the information of these supplies and additional support that we have going on currently. One of the other large questions that have uh, that has come to facilities and across the UC is about our ventilation systems. So for those buildings that have been in active use for the last year, we've maximized the ventilation systems to the capacity of the building's uh, systems abilities. Uh, for those buildings that are in use, we've actually extended the airflow an hour before and an hour after traditional operating hours to again, guarantee as much outside um, air as possible and ventilation and air circulation in each space as possible. 
We've also for several years um, have had um, uh, MERV, uh, MERV rated filter uh, change out system. It happens on a quarterly basis uh, through all of our building systems. That program uh, has included maximized air filter ratings and change out for a couple of years and we continue to do that on a regular basis. We'll also do an additional check for those buildings with general assignment classrooms to ensure the most recent uh, ventilation changes have taken place for those filters. We're also conducting for our general assignment classrooms an air exchange review. We have over a hundred classrooms that we're uh, reviewing to just double check that the air flow is maximum allowed for the system in that particular building. Uh, as we prepare for fall, that will be a program we're doing throughout the summer, uh, including some CO2 air quality check uh, programs and software that we're going to be using just to ensure that as people begin to come back and uh, students are and faculty are in classes, that we have maximized everything to the greatest possibility of the uh, building system. So for the next slide, as you know, there is no single method to prevent infection. And rather, we can visualize prevention efforts using a Swiss cheese model. And so this means that each layer or each step taken can further reduce the virus spread. So some of these uh, steps are, uh, have a personal responsibility tied to them, while others are shared. And it's important to note that the vaccine provides a significant layer to the Swiss cheese model in preventing the spread. Um, I'd like to put, I'd like to add a note on masking. Um, we've rec we recognize that the CDC has provided guidance on vaccinated individuals and not masking. But at this point, as of today, uh, masks are still required for all individuals on campus until the state provides further instruction. So some of the other ways that the campus community continues to protect ourselves is we've identified the, well, we've incorporated, I should say, the California tiered system into the operationalizing component of what it means to be in a campus. The planning framework takes each of these tiered systems, identifies the limitations or capacities that are identified and places that into work situations uh, that exist here on campus. What it also does is it looks at what is going to take place after the June 15th removal of these tiers and how will other departments be operationalizing. We've based this off of a, a several bits of information from the California Department of Health who has provided the uh, blueprint for a safer economy. We've also used the guidance that has been provided from that same agency, the California Department of Health for the higher institution uh, or institutions of higher education levels guidance. This framework contains a lot of information. Uh, the utilization of it is as you provide your information for worksite specific plans, it can be used as a frame of reference. It'll help you understand the limitations, the capacities, et cetera, that exist here on campus. This is another way, again, that we've tried to interlay the information we receive from state, local, and our campus community. So what are the first steps as a supervisor to return to work? Supervisors have an additional responsibility that needs to be considered. First and foremost, supervisors should look at their operations and determine what the in-person workforce should look like. And supervisors need to assess what work, if any, can continue to occur remotely and then have dialogues with each one of their staff members. When those discussions have occurred with staff, then supervisors should discuss their unit's work plan with their immediate supervisor, whether that's a director, a chair, a dean, or a vice chancellor. And all that information that's communicated will then help better uh, prepare our campus to return. And it's it's, it is critical that supervisors, once they've made that determination of what their near future plans look like, that they complete the worksite specific plan. 
And ultimately, it is the supervisor's responsibility to ensure that their staff follow the campus COVID prevention plan and their worksite specific plan as written. And it and and this worksite specific plan is used in so many ways to support campus activities. And we really want to ensure that supervisors understand that this is not only uh, a risk assessment that's performed for their worksite, but this information is shared with facilities, environmental health and safety, and others in order to prepare and maintain those work sites in a safe manner. So uh, many people have been asking about whether or not we'll be surveying our staff and the answer is yes. And we're uh, anticipating that survey will go out the week of um, May 24th. Uh, that will go out to both um, employees who've been working remotely, hybrid, as well as those that have been working on campus. We wanted to make sure that we could uh, provide them with the most up-to-date assumptions uh, that we would have about uh, the near future and uh, get their responses related to those assumptions. Uh, we will use all that information that comes back to evaluate it and see what adjustments, if any, we can make to the plans going forward uh, as we look forward to um, hosting more students this fall and uh, seeing more staff and um, faculty back on campus. But we do expect that there will be uh, continued remote work and likely many hybrid type models um, as well. And we'd like to point your attention to uh, the plethora of resources that are currently available on the HR website, as well as the COVID uh, website. Uh, we believe that employees should take full advantage of the resources that are available. For ergonomics specifically, uh, there are resources available for not only working safely in remote environments, but also um, connecting with our campus ergonomists to provide virtual ergonomic assessments. And all these are available to all employees who work on campus um, and we encourage the use. And again, for uh, guidelines, uh, both employees and supervisors should have access to the resources currently available. And these resources can help guide how to operationalize flexible work schedules or hybrid schedules. So if you access the uh, Human Resources website, you'll find flexible work agreement forms, guidance documents and considerations, as well as equipment checkout forms. As we continue to work towards returning to campus and continuing to support our essential workers um, already on campus, we wanted to take a moment and highlight um, some considerations and also um, some resources for support. Um, our goal is to continue to enable your success through technology. So um, ITS and our partners here on this webinar are available to support you as you return or continue to work on campus. We wanted to highlight um, a couple of areas of what's available to you as you prepare uh, to return. Um, think about reaching out to ITS and um, acquiring a Cisco soft phone, being able to um, take calls on your PC or on a laptop uh, and becoming more agile and mobile uh, with our new world uh, post COVID. We also wanted to highlight some of our efforts around uh, continuing to support our initiatives on campus and uh, around research, around student learning and faculty and staff um, services. We are looking at enhancing our outdoor and indoor wireless services. We are looking to increase our technology and increase engagement for faculty and staff in the classroom. We are also uh, making available on-site support uh, via online appointments. Down below on this slide, you'll be able to see some of the areas that you can access 24 seven uh, to uh, access information of our hours, our availability, and also online resources. 
one of our main points on this slide is focus on keepworking.ucr.edu to highlight some of the tools, practices, and also training um, that you can access on demand to continue to support you um, in, in your role at the university. So a few more questions that have been received have been specific about parking. Uh, if you're only coming to campus occasionally, what does that mean for parking permits? Well, the, park, transportate, the parking and transportation services have developed a variety of programs here that we'll go through. Uh, first of all, if you're infrequently coming to campus, there are a number of lots that are able to, uh, you're able to purchase a daily type permit. There's information that's following. You can see the lots that are there listed below as well. In addition to the program of a daily permit process, uh, the Department of Transportation is also going to be implementing come July 1st, a 10 pack permit uh, that will allow individuals uh, to park on campus for one day. Um, the rates and et cetera are posted on that website. Those white links there that will be posted um, on our webpage uh, will it direct you directly to parking transportation. You can also look at that now. You can see that the parking permits, that 10 pack will expire uh, the end of June in 2022. So it enables another opportunity for individuals who are infrequently coming to campus, working remotely, uh, some parking options. Now, will carpooling programs be in place in the summer or in fall? So it's another question that's been actively received. And you can see here that enrollment uh, for the 2021-22 program will begin on September 1st. Uh, equally so, you can contact TAPS uh, with regards to uh, that request as well. There's been a lot of uh, discussion about the um, University of California Office of the President vaccine, COVID vaccine mandate. Many of you probably know that uh, they put together a draft. It uh, came out for a basic comment in the month of May, and we expect uh, early on uh, this summer that that likely will be finalized. That draft, however, indicated that, first of all, everyone was strongly encouraged to get a vaccine. Uh, it indicated that that vaccine mandate would be um, effective when the uh, federal FDA basically gave full approval of a COVID-19 vaccine that wasn't on emergency use, uh, use authorization. So it has some caveats in there and the assumption that the vaccine doses are readily available. Certainly that is uh, the case right now. So we're expecting to hear the final update from the president's office in the near future. That mandate as drafted uh, indicates that everyone will have to submit in response to that mandate, either showing that you've been vaccinated and providing evidence of that, or uh, submitting a document that would um, give you an opportunity to uh, have an exception to that vaccine policy. Those details are still work, being worked out, but as drafted, the, the two exceptions are medical uh, as well as a strongly held religious belief. Now, for those individuals that are not vaccinated and are approved under one of those exceptions, the policy generally as drafted indicates that they would have to have some mitigation associated with coming to campus that would likely include PPE, so masks, something like that, and likely uh, ongoing regular testing. Again, we'll see what the final policy of the president's office is, but those are the key issues that are already in the draft. We'll see if there are any changes uh, when it's finalized. And of course, we'll look forward to seeing if the FDA does give final approval to one of those um, vaccines. Additionally, uh, next week, our, camp, our COVID management committee uh, will be focused on more details with regards to vaccines, testing, et cetera. So we encourage you next week to participate as well in that town hall uh, so that you're able to learn a bit more information as to what's the campus's approach to vaccine mandates, tracking enforcements, et cetera.
And lastly, we thank you for your patience and recognizing that the pandemic and the guidelines are very fluid and changing on an almost daily, sometimes hourly basis. And so we would encourage you to um, send your questions to EHNS Public Health if you have any questions or concerns, and also check with the two websites you see on your screen right now for updates as we do our best to update the website as frequently as possible. And lastly, we intend to have more opportunities to share information with uh, everyone on campus. The next scheduled session is a town hall that's sponsored by staff assembly and that will be with Vice Chancellor Bomati and uh, Associate Vice Chancellor Tammy Few on June 16th at 10 a.m. Thank you everybody for attending our town hall today. Uh, we look forward to continuing this conversation toward a successful campus return. And before we conclude, are there any other closing comments from our participants? All right, well, everybody hearing none, thank you again for attending today. We look forward to the continuing uh, engagement that this will offer us to us, as well as your participation in other continuity group updates. Thank you all and take care. <laughs>